Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another special episode of Herschel Talkers. Got a great uh, guest, one of my uh, good friends, one of our big Georgia buddies here. Call her Amy Dog. How are we doing today? We're hanging in there. Counting down the days till Monday. Good deal. We are very excited. Uh, Georgia headed back to the uh, national title, which we are very excited about. Um, first off, since Amy, what, before we jump into that, Amy was at the game. How was the atmosphere? And just how was the overall game when you're there? I'm sure it was really exciting and a nail better. Yeah, um, I thought the atmosphere was very tense. And it was really hard to tell, like, whether or not the Georgia um, people outnumbered the Ohio State people. Yeah. I really couldn't tell until the fourth quarter light up show because the Ohio State fans, they were loud, right. very, very loud. And that made me a lot more nervous than I had been in previous games. And uh, what was the other question? I'm sorry. Yeah, just uh, so what would you say is the um, was it 60 40, you think, or yeah, I would say probably 60 40. That's kind of, that's kind of what I heard. A little bit more, but good deal. Yeah, and um, can you see the graphic there? Sorry, I've been playing yeah. with that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, jumping right into the game. Uh, first off, it was a nail biter 42 41. Um, I really thought we we were beat, to be honest, at 38-27. I know we just couldn't move the ball in the third quarter. Um, we were really, really struggling. I think a lot of people um, kind of had that as a, as a Georgia fan. And, and then uh, Bennett just started, you know, leading us. And he looked great in the, uh, the fourth quarter, really got hot. I think he had almost 200 yards, which is, a, I think it was a record or close to it. So three, th three touchdowns, one pick. Um, this really, and you probably know this, being a Georgia fan, reminded me a lot of, like, the 2017-2018 games against Alabama where we would pretty much beat them the, the whole game. We just kind of mm -hmm. got them at the end. And I kind of feel like that's kind of our luck and just uh, the will of our team with Kirby Smart and kind of leading the programs where we're headed. And it's just kind of like it's our time now. Um, got to give it C.J. Stroud. I mean, he had probably one of the best games he's ever played. He was just red hot, um, four touchdowns and 348 yards. And then um, – you know, Marvis Harrison Jr. was just, he was kind of unstoppable with it for a little bit. And then I know the targeting, non-targeting mm -hmm. uh, happened. I was going to ask you that. I know you were there. What was your thoughts when it happened? Was it like kind of a big deal? Because I know he was, I was like their best player, second best player so far. Well, one thing that was, I don't, I had never noticed this before being at the Benz. They didn't show us the replays. Oh. Like pretty much for anything that they had to review, we never saw any of the replays. So it happened on the other side of the field for me. So I had really, I thought he was done. I thought it was targeting, but only because I couldn't see anything. And I was just going with what they called on the field originally. Right. Um, but looking at it after it, to me, it looks more, if, if that's targeting, then that Stetson got targeted during Tennessee game. Right. Like so subjective. I don't know. I'm glad I don't have to make those calls. Yeah, I, I agree. I knew at first I'm like, all right, Bullard's probably out of there. I was thinking the worst. It would have been uh, first and goal um, well inside the top and the five there, I believe. But uh, I can kind of see both ways because he kind of like hit under the chin but got it with his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't really like injuries. But I think originally C.J. Stroud was just trying to throw it away and he somehow almost just like almost like dropped in a bucket, which that was the, kind of the tail of his night. But uh Ended up being fourth and goal, kick field goal, I believe, and he ended up being um, one of the great things. Also, I want to mention, I don't know if you, when you noticed that you were there, it's probably loud. So, to me, they're talking about the the, the timeout, timeout yeah. uh, of, of the year uh, or of all time. So, what do you think about the timeout? And they almost, and then also the refs missed it that it was 12, 12 men on the field. I kind of felt like everything happened to, even though I was in the stadium, I was processing everything on a delay because it was so loud. Like, and if it didn't happen right in front of me, I didn't really know what was going on. Um, so I had to keep asking people like, what? And then when I, so I thought he got the first down and I was like, oh, but then I'm like, wait, why, why are these Georgia fans cheering? Cause I was kind of right at the split where I had Ohio state fans to my right and I had Georgia fans to my left. Right. So okay. I'm glad he did it. <laughs> He's a much smarter man than I did. I am. Did you hear about how we did it though? It was one of the special teams that analysts who caught who caught it and just started shouting down over the headphones like timeout, timeout, timeout. Yeah, I, I did hear that because you can kind of tell he, he even said after it post game, he's like, I didn't really I don't like making that call or whatever. So they must have really, really saw something. And then 12 men on the field is interesting, even though they missed that. But yeah, that was probably if they get that, they might win because 
first first and ten, I think we were at nine minutes left. It was just big, uh, a big part of the game, which was great. Um, I did want to ask you, since you're there, how was Ohio State fans? Do they seem pretty respectful compared to other fans, or how was that? Yeah, they um, they seemed pretty respectful while they were there. Um, the ones that I met at the game, but I had something happen to me yesterday with an Ohio State fan that was very weird. I was out for a jog in my neighborhood, and I had my Georgia hat on, you know, to protect my son, my face from the sun, and right. just I like I stopped at the stop sign to like let a car pass, and the car had an Ohio State license plate on the front, and they flipped me off. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just running with my Georgia hat, but yeah. that was my only negative experience with the fan. And that was a I mean, in our town. They're probably a little salty, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty funny. The only, the only thing I had is I think I was going in, it was a uh, new year's Eve and uh, not new year's Eve, or yeah, new year's Eve. And I was going into like the Harris Teeter over there on South, South Boulevard, the, the, uh, the main one there. And uh high state guy was coming in. I did have, a, I had a Georgia shirt on. And he's coming out and he kind of just gave me a look, but it was he's an older guy. I don't know. It was just like not the nicest look. So well, I, I think was like, hey, you ready for tonight? <laughs> it looked like it was like an 18-year-old kid that flipped me off. Yeah. He must have been real salty, but yeah. yeah, especially doing that to a girl. I could see some dudes doing it. But um, <laughs> yeah, I just think, you know, it's it, it was for for them, they've kind of failed our misery, the Ohio State. Um I think they're now like some of the stats two and nine. I think they're two and nine in the playoffs, all or the uh, not them, but the uh, Big Ten in the playoffs. Michigan, who we'll talk about, is zero and six in the playoffs, uh, or actually zero and six in the bowl games for under Jim Harbaugh, which is crazy. So, um, yeah, all in all, and then uh, one last thing before we move on. Um, do you think this is? the best bowl game ever maybe for a Georgia fan or just uh, all together or I kind of mentioned that Rose Bowl is pretty damn good being in overtime and you know, that was at the Rose Bowl in the stakes what do you think do you think this was better I know stress wise it wasn't we were, we were down in that game but I don't know what's your thoughts on that um I think I think I enjoyed the Rose Bowl more um I think I was much more stressed out this whole game and at the end of this game, even though we won, I was like, oh, it was I, I liked the Rose Bowl better, I think, overall. I think a lot of a lot of people even like um, you know, Kirby was even you can tell I heard he gave Mike of a chew in after that. He wasn't the happiest. So uh I mean, I think was, I think we knew we maybe got away with one, but hey, it wins win. But mm-hmm. um yeah, I'd I'd say I think the Rose Bowl was a little I like cool. going back, I haven't really seen a good angle of the missed field goal like is there a chance that somebody got a hand on it because the way it hooked left like so far I just think he shanked it it was really bad and I didn't have he didn't have a chance even though he had all these stats they were bringing up he hadn't missed one in a while but it's just that was his longest too right he'd never hit one at 50 before yeah it was 50 and then just that much pressure on the line for a college kicker yeah and then Podleski already missed two so that's you know six other points right so it should not even come down to that exactly so yeah, just all in all, a great win is really uh, great for Jordan fan. And then the whole uh, they're doing the viral video that I'm sure it went over that right when he was kicking it, it was almost like it left in 2022, and then yeah. <laughs> in 2023. I mean, you couldn't have like as they were showing synced that up better. So I don't think anyone in the stadium realized it was midnight and that it had turned into New Year's. I yeah, I think I was, I didn't even think about it when it happened. I think I turned to the other guy and said, screw Ryan Seacrest, we're trying to win a national title here or whatever. And he's <laughs> laughing right when it happened. So, and then, you know, it kind of hits you at his New Year's. So it's good. Um, so, yeah. All right. And then we'll jump, we'll, we'll touch on this real quick. So TCU and Michigan. So, which is a crazy game. And I think a lot of people didn't see that coming. Um, actually a really game to watch if you were a neutral fan, but um yeah, 51 45 in a shootout. I think what really hurt um, Michigan is the two pick sixes by JJ McCarthy. You just, I mean, statistically, I think when you have one pick six, you're going to lose the end, but he had two. And then I don't know if you got to see the kind of questionable call on that touchdown. Like, clearly, like he had possession when he kind of his butt hit the ground in the end zone mm-hmm. and he caught him down at the one. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty crazy. I mean, and then they fumbled the next play. So I think that's like 21 points right there. Max Duggan is really – he's gritty. 
he's he kind of gutsy guy, puts everything on his back. That's what kind of scares me a little bit. And then the uh, Quentin Johnston, who here has uh, six receptions for 163 and a touchdown. I think he's going to be a hard matchup for us. And then they're running back. Uh, I think Kendra M- M- Miller is kind of questionable with a knee. He's really good. And then the uh, em- Emory guy, 17 carries for 150 and a touchdown. Uh, he's really good. So they're going to be tough. But all in all, I think it was really humbling. The Big Ten thought they had it. Big Ten had a bad day losing, of course, both games. So what was your uh, thoughts? I know you're probably busy tailgating, but. Um, we watched a little bit of it. Um, and I, that was the first TCU game I've watched all season. So I was I had had some friends tell me that they thought TCU was going to win. And, you know, it makes a great underdog story. Um, so I was surprised that they did, though. But if you had to look at Doug, uh, Doug Duggan, who would you compare him to that we've played? Is there any quarterback that we've played that you would compare Yeah, um, that's a great question. I kind of heard one today. Uh, maybe a little different the way he can run. It's kind of like a Bo Nix, even though we've contained him. And he likes to run. I mean, him having, I think, 15 carries for 57 yards, he puts his, uh, you know, puts his body on the line, which we have in the past struggled against, you know, mobile quarterbacks. C.J. Stroud didn't like to run it, and obviously he would kind of make these annoying slip out mm-hmm. 20 and 25 yard runs. Um, he's not as accurate, or I don't think he'll be as high a draft pick as um, C.J. Stroud. And I don't think they have the receivers. Um, okay. Yeah, like Marvin Harrison Jr. Just he was a problem. He might have been the best. Him and maybe um, Hyatt from Tennessee, maybe just they're different, but not as explosive. But I mean, this guy, I think, I guess you put uh, Ringo on him, and then Ringo struggled. You'll probably put him on. And I just think they have um, kind of a different dynamic. But what scares me is, you know, they've won five or six games within a possession. It's like one of those, they're not going to die. They're going to give everything you have. So. That's a little what don't worry about. But, yeah, anyway, great win for them. Um, I think a lot of people – I think they were only – Michigan was favored by four or by seven and a half, and they covered. So, this is – I think it was a big shocker because everybody was thinking, like, all right, you're gonna, the winner's going to play Michigan. And that kind of set the tone for us. And I'm sure both teams in the stadium, when they saw the score, were like, all right, we get TCU. So, I'm sure that was even added motivation. Um, so, yeah, any, any more thoughts on that? And I was a tailgate there in the bins there. You can't can you even tailgate. And and also so, I was hearing you can't tailgate in SoFi Stadium. You heard that? Some kind of crazy thing. Okay. What's up with that? You know my pro tip now. Like when the weather is not good, I just make reservations at restaurants that I know won't kick me out. And I just <laughs> sit there and and eat and watch TV and drink until they make me leave. So that's what we did for the bins. It was great. We went to the hard yeah. rock, stayed there. And there was actually a UGA employee, a staffer, like one of the football teams, like I recognized him. He was sitting beside us Sorry. and then at like two o'clock and then he had to go be with the team and like left the rest of his family there. But it was pretty cool to be like, I've seen that guy on TV before. So how many times have you been in Mercedes Benz now? You've been there a bunch, right? Um, like, for Georgia games or for anything? I guess Georgia games. Yeah. And I think this is my third Georgia game. I went to the, the national championship that should not be mentioned there. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't go to any of the SEC games. And then I went to the Oregon game and then this game. Oh, cool. Okay. So I'm too poor to qualify for yep. SEC tickets through the, through the university. <laughs> um, all right, jumping, jumping right into it. But hey, you did, you, did, you did get to go to the national title game last year, so it was great. Yes. All right, so jumping into the, the big game here, it's going to be SoFi State in uh, Los Angeles. It's going to be 7.30 kick, which which I like. Um, it going to be a little earlier because I know that game last year was stressful and it was it was late. So I think they wanted to switch it up. ESPN point spread is 12 and a half. Um, we talked about Max Duggan, um, Stetson Bennett. I know you don't like picks, so I'll make a pick here in a little bit. So what's your, uh, what's your breakdown of the game and maybe what you're worried about in the matchup? I will say – what I am worried about, we usually play – We I think we played them once this year. They do have this uh, kind of a different 3-3-5 three, three, defense you probably heard. Yeah. Um, so that will be interesting, which I think that's c- – kind of stops the whole, like, Big 12, spread it out and throw it deep. But I heard if you have tight ends and running backs, it's really good against the running game. I think Michigan thought they were just going kind of out talent TCU, which it didn't work for them, and they turned the ball over, so – I think that kind of hopefully helps us out and plays in our hands, but we'll see. Um, I think a lot of like how we approach it depends on Darnell, right? Because when he went out 
for us, that changed our whole offense. Cause I was reading some stuff that they say that our offense is like runs through him, whether yes. it's they're blocking or going out to receive. Right. So yeah. Have we heard anything? Like what are the chances? I heard it might've been a little better than we think, but if I had to be, if I was betting, I, I don't think you, you've seen, they might try to like shoot him up or give him one, or you might try to just see how he does in warmups, but I heard he could probably game time decision, but I also heard Oscar Delp did block f- fairly well. Oh I think, yeah. I think Oscar did fantastic. It's just, he's a different, he's a different uh, tool, right? Like you, you have to use him in a different way than you do Darnell. I agree. Um, and, and I did hear TCU, you know, they do have some kind of quick defensive lineman, but I think this kind of comes down a we'll, little, we'll, Talk, we'll probably break it down that um might just come down to talent if we don't turn the ball over. Um, I just think they have a bunch of three and four stars. I did hear until that game that like half the team for TC had never been, even been to a bowl game. And in in it ironic that Kirby played them in the Liberty Bowl their first year. I'm sure you heard that. That's yeah. interesting. I think we'd be um it was really close. So with Jacob Eason, 20, 27, 21 or something like that. It's one of those Thursday or Friday. Right before New Year's at 12 o'clock, nobody was watching. You know, of course we were, but yeah, it was just one of those. You know, I think we're seven and five. But yeah, that's interesting that we're playing them. Um, we are working on, of course, going back to back national titles, first time in the um, college football era, which is really good. I think the last was it the last one was Alabama in 2010, 2011. I think mm-hmm. and I always get it mixed up if it rolls over into the next year, but um. Yeah, the three three five. Um, I just think we're going to be able to run the ball on them. Um, Kendall Milton's been running hard. McIntosh's been looking pretty good. Dijon Edwards had another great game. Um, I think Oscar Delp is going to be if if Darnell doesn't play a big thing. I think you can actually use him in the passing game. He's got really good hands when he's played. Of course, Bowers is going to be in there. And how about Arian Smith coming out of nowhere with what three receptions for one twenty nine? I think he only had three receptions on the whole year. So. You can just use him more. He, he stepped up. Um, A.D. Mitchell looks like he's healthy. It's been nice to have them both healthy. Like, I'm glad to see Arian get those reps. And because every year he seems to get hurt. And it, he yes. just seems to love the dog so much. So I want him to be All able right. to excel. Exactly. And then I think Lad, he was out there. But you can kind of tell it wasn't as quick. I don't know if another week or, or helps. And then Marius Mims couldn't tell that Warren wasn't out there. Um, there was a stat, uh, I think Derek sent me today. Um, George has only given up eight sacks this year, which is some kind of like record through 14 games. It's the best. So to me, they should have got this um, Joe Moore award that Michigan got for the second straight year. I think they got robbed on that. But I know that's the whole award thing. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and make my pick. Um, so I think it's going to be really close. I don't think they cover the spread. I kind of went back and forth, but I'm going to go um, 38-27. And they don't cover, but I think it's going to be a four-quarter game. We get a late touchdown, like running the ball. And I think we're going to try to kind of lean on them a little bit. Um, I know they're going to try to um, spread it out and everything, but I like us a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. Um, just coming off because I think you know, George, uh, I think Kirby kind of gave him an ass to him last mm-hmm. weekend. You can kind of tell he wasn't really happy after the game, and the way he kind of called out Bennett and the team, I think that's just the way Kirby is. He knew, he knew we kind of got away with one, but I'm gonna go uh, 38 27. Um, that won't be a comfortable win, but I think a late touchdown. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my pick. You don't have to make your pick, but uh, ever how you feel. <laughs> well, I, 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 I just have a good. question for you then, yeah. So is their defense that good? Because I don't know a lot about their defense. Yeah, I actually looked into them. So they're like like 70th in total defense, 65th mm-hmm. against the uh, rush, and they've given up a lot of points, um, you know, in passing, or I forget what their stats are. So they've gotten better, though. They've trended. It almost – like a best analogy I heard is, you know how baseball, let's say when the Braves got hot last year, like you barely get in the playoffs. They're one of those that are kind of dangerous. But – Big 12, you know, they put up 62 against Ohio State, or not Ohio State, but Iowa State, um, you know, 41 against West Virginia. They did get beat by Kansas State, and then you see, like, Bama smokes um, Kansas State, which Bryce Young was just playing out of his mind. So I know that's – you can't compare all that. But um, I just think we can – out. we have better coaching. We have better talent. I think we got Bennett. And things close. I mean, great, great story. Sonny Dykes is a great coach. 
I mean, you made it in your first season, I think, coming off five and seven. You made it to the national title game, so great for them. Um, I did do some research. It's horned frog, and it's actually a lizard in Texas. So it's actually a lizard in that thing, if you look at it. I did not know that. I thought it was. Uh, some people were trolling. And then they actually expand, expand when, you know, one of their predators is around because mm-hmm. so you can't eat them as quick. So it's horned with the ED. Because so, for a while, I was caught on TC horned frogs, like horn. Yeah. It's like horned. Okay. So there's a little useless knowledge for you. But I think it's of the lizard. And it's actually been around um, their name since like the 18, 19, 1897 or something. So it's pretty historic. Christian school. Private, I think it's got around 9,000. We have, what, 33,000 um, 33, undergrad, give or take. So, yeah. uh, Did you see that um, they didn't, like, and they are smaller, so it's not their fault. They can't just create more people. But <laughs> they didn't sell out their school's allotment for national championship tickets. Oh, right. Maybe they didn't so, have money. Some UGA fans were going and buying it from their school. Hmm. So. What so far hold is like... Seventy. Sounds about. I mean, what what do you, if you had to pick just by that? How many think? What do you think will seven? Maybe seventy five, twenty five, or. I mean, it's going to be so minimum sixty forty. I would say, just based on the amount of people from my like my small hometown that I know that are going. So on Wikipedia, uh, uh, capacity on Wikipedia is seventy thousand. Expandable up to a hundred thousand for major events, and I'm sure that's the whole like on the on the ground. So I guess seventy, which saves Ben's about seventy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it said, I'm sure you'll notice it, uh, five to six billion dollars. So I'm sure it's really nice. It's really nice there. I had to see it. So far, yeah. I thought the best stadium I've been to was Hard Rock. Like. Oh really? Wow. Well, right. Well. I liked it. And the Wi-Fi worked. Like I've never been in a stadium where like your phone worked the whole time. It was, that was kind of nice. You got to admit that they need to work on that Sanford stadium. It sucks there. Yeah. There's a lot of things they could work on, but, but they try so hard to keep like the integrity of like the tradition of the stadium, but mm. something's going to have to change eventually. Yeah. Um, Uncle Lou's big YouTube guy. He said, I don't want to go back to a George game. He went for the tech game. He's like, cause he tries to post during the game or they do whatever. And he's like, that was the worst. Uh, I I mean, I know it's like, you got 9,000 people trying to get on a network. So. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else? I know that was uh, short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also uh, wanted to, I got to mention, sorry. I feel like a humble uh, thing. I mentioned our uh, sponsor here. Sorry, I forgot about that. VivaTequilaSeltzer.com. Zero sugar, zero carbs, gluten-free, live long, live well, live it up. You want to, I like the elderberry, elderberry. This will be something to drink during the game when you're all stressed. If you want 20% <laughs> off, put a hustle for 20% off for VivaTequilaSeltzer.com. Great, uh, great company there. We've been using as a sponsor. Anything on the way out? Good Amy dog. dog. <laughs> Good luck to us. Hopefully we'll bring back two. I do want to ask this because we were texting and talking the other day. So if we do win, if and we had our second ring, like what what's next year? Would we like? Yeah. No, never. <laughs> we, I like, too. The, the tree peat. Keep it going. I think offensively we might have a better team next year of all the transfers we got coming in. Um, and I just think we might have and our defense, we're not losing a lot. I mean, J- Jalen Carter, you can't lose him. We're going to lose Bennett, of course, but might have most of the running backs back. Got a great recruiting class coming in. Um, Aaron Murray said that earlier in the year, and everybody thought it was crazy. He's like, there's a chance to three P. Carson Beck can spin it. So he did say that. I like it. Let's there do we go. It. <laughs> go, dogs. Go, dogs. I appreciate it. Good luck, Amy. Bye. All right, see you.